Good morning. Welcome to day 109 in the Summer in Psalms. Uh, I learned a new word today, and I'm not going to try to tell you that I'm the smartest guy in the world because I'm not. Uh, I want to read out of my uh, New Living Translation Bible what uh, it said about this psalm and a couple of other psalms. Uh, this was a very dark psalm, and, and uh, I'm sure, like me, you probably had trouble picking out a couple of verses uh, that um, rose up. And I just want to want to read a note that's uh, in my, my Bible and share this with you, and then we'll we'll start. Okay, this is uh, this is out of the New Living Translation. This is a note about Psalm 35 and Psalm 109. It says this is one of the imprecatory or cursing psalms that call upon God to deal with enemies. These psalms sound extremely harsh, but we we must remember the following: David could not understand why he was forced to. Flee from men who were unjustly seeking to kill him. David's call for justice was sincere. It was not a cover for his own personal vengeance. He truly wanted God's perfect ideal for his nation. David did not say that he would take revenge, but he gave the matters to God. These are merely his suggestions. These psalms use hyperbole or overstatement. They were meant to motivate others to take a strong stand against sin and evil. And that's the note out of my Bible. So I learned what imprecatory means. Uh, it is a cursing psalm. That is definitely what this is. What verses rose up for you? For me, verses 4 and 5. Let's take a look at those. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I am praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. Um, David's praying for his enemies, praying for those that have cursed him, uh, have chased after him, have caused him angst. He's praying for them. Uh, he says he loves them. Uh, we need to remember that. Okay, here's my reveal. It says, while we must hate evil and work to overcome it, we must love everyone, including those who do evil, because God loves them. We are called to hate the sin, but to love the sinner. We can only do this through God's strength. Here's my implementation. Praying for others by name is the quickest way to love the sinner yet hate the sin. When we put it into God's hands, we are releasing the situation to him. We should leave it in his hands so the enemy will not get a stronghold in our lives. Many of you know that I spent 27 years behind the counter as a uh, golf club professional. And many times um, folks would come in and maybe have not had the best day on the golf course and kind of want to share their misery with those of us that were behind the counter. And when I say share, sometimes they take it out upon us. Uh, what I used to do, uh, and I'm sure those of you that work in retail or work with other people have done this, and, and if not, maybe this will help you uh, as you deal with folks like this sometimes that want to share their misery with you. Um, I went back into my office and I shut the door, and I just started to pray for those people. Uh, what I found that happened wasn't that God was taking care of those people, but God was taking care of my heart. Uh, made sure that the next time they came in, I met them with a smile and loved on them and uh, just made sure that their day was uh, was blessed. And they didn't see me uh, with a downtrodden look or with an angry look, uh, but that they saw me with uh, hope and smile and uh, hoping that their day would, would turn out great. So it released um, the enemy stronghold in my life where maybe I could get bitter about uh, what what was said or how it was said or why it was even said. Um, I think that released God's power in that situation to help me uh, to deal with that. Um, anyway, that's one of many stories uh, that happened behind the counter, and I'm sure you have some as well. Uh, but just, uh, just pray for that person, and next thing you know, God will just release that situation. Here's my prayer. It says, Father, teach us daily to love the sinner, yet hate the sin. Grow us more into the image of Christ, that we might lead others to you through our actions as your children. Remind us every day that if you're for us, who can ever be against us? 
I've enjoyed my week with you this week. I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that God's word has spoken to you in ways uh, that would just encourage, uh, encourage you, uh, enlighten uh, you, uh, help you look for others to share uh, his story with and to be blessed and to be an encouragement. Let me pray for us as we go. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you continually teach us from your word. Uh, help us to be um, better children, Lord, that we might uh, we might carry the name, your name, into the streets and that you might be honored and you might be glorified that everything that we say and do uh, would lead others to you. I pray, Father, that uh, as we come across these situations that... Um, People are trying to um, speak against us or cause harm or evil or whatever. I pray that we would be reminded that you're on the throne, that you're in control, uh, and that it doesn't matter who's against us because you're for us. I pray that you would use the situation for your glory and honor. We thank you and love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Uh, send me your verses. Let me know what, what rose up. Uh, to you in this, this was a difficult psalm uh, to read, uh, to, to, to learn um, some things out of it that um, maybe I hadn't learned before. Uh, just uh, share those with me. I'd love to hear from them. Uh, let me know uh, what rose up in you. Have a blessed day, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon.